millions of years of evolution, perfecting the ancient art of turning glucose into the almighty currency of the body, ATP. The primary reaction of cellular respiration is this. The first part is a combustion reaction, turning glucose, and of course oxygen, into water and carbon dioxide. This process releases energy. 60% of this energy will later be used to fuel the second equation, turning an ADP and a phosphate group into an ATP molecule. This is a synthesis reaction. The process is split into three parts. Glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. In this video, we will talk about glycolysis. This is the equation for glycolysis. Kind of bulky, right? Let's break it down. In the reaction, you start with two NAD plus molecules, two ATP, four ADP, and two phosphate groups. After the reaction, you end up with two pyruvates, two NADH, two ADP, four ADP, two water molecules, and two protons. So that was a lot. What does any of that mean? I don't know. You probably don't know either, so let's figure it out. You start with glucose, which is a six carbon chain, and you end with two pyruvates, which are each three carbon chains. So essentially, you're breaking the glucose into two pyruvates. The NAD plus molecules get reduced to NADH by the addition of a hydrogen atom. The two ATP are used to fuel the breaking of glucose into the two pyruvates. The ADPs turn into ATP by the addition of a phosphate group. Now, all of that doesn't happen at once, so how does it happen? Well, it takes place in a series of 10 super long, weird, and confusing reactions, but we will still go over them because I need the video to be longer. So, these are the 10 steps, and like most stuff in this video, it makes no sense. So let's break it down, again. We start off with a glucose molecule, which reacts with one ATP. The ATP loses its phosphate group and becomes an ADP, while glucose gains that phosphate group and becomes a glucose 6-phosphate. Then what happens is odd. The glucose 6-phosphate does not really react with anything, it just changes its shape from a hexagon to a pentagon, becoming fructose 6-phosphate. This then reacts with another ATP to turn it into an ATP. And the fructose becomes fructose 1,6-biphosphate. Who names these things? Anyways, this molecule is actually cut in half to form two dihydroxyacetine phosphate molecules, which turn into glycerohyde 3-phosphate through a magical process known as a very, very long name. What then happens is one of our phosphate groups merges with our glycerohyde 3-phosphate to form a 1,2-5-phosphoglycerate. In this step, an NAD plus is reduced to an NADH and a proton. What then happens is an ADP steals a phosphate group from our 1,2-biphosphoglycerate to form a 3-phosphoglycerate and an ATP. This is our first ATP produced, but so far we have used two ATPs, so let's hope we get more. Through another very long name, we get 2-phosphoglycerate, and if you want to know that name, it is this. Yeah, why does chemistry have to be so difficult? In step 9, our 2-phosphoglycerate turns into phosphophenopyruvate, and in this process, one water molecule is produced. After this, another phosphate group is stolen by an ADP to produce an ATP, and our phosphophenopyruvate pyruvate turns into good old pyruvate. So, if you listen to any of that nonsensical gibberish, you might have noticed that we put in two ATP and only got two out. So that reaction was kind of useless, right? No. This is because when our fructose 1,6-biphosphate split in half, it formed two dihydroacetane phosphates, so steps 5 to 10 happened twice, therefore producing two more ATP to get a net gain of two ATP. Time for the interesting facts about glycolysis and its history. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell, kind of the jelly-like filling in which the organelles are suspended. 
Although cellular respiration is a combustion reaction, glycolysis is really a series of complex reactions such as a single replacement, synthesis, decomposition, and many, many more. Glycolysis does not have an especially interesting historical background, as it is a natural reaction that happens every second in your body and is therefore kind of immune to controversy. It was discovered by Gustav Embedden, Otto Murha, and Jacob Carlo Parnes in the 1940s, and hasn't changed, as again, it is a natural process, not a man-made process. Glycolysis is a good reaction, otherwise you would not be alive, and no life would be possible as we know it today. Technically speaking, there are alternatives, such as the pentose phosphate pathway, but it is very similar to glycolysis, and no organism naturally does it, so it's not really an alternative. So, in summary, glycolysis is one of the three parts of cellular respiration. It is a chemical reaction that is split into 10 overly complicated steps. It turns glucose into ATP, and ATP is vital to life, so glycolysis is important to keep every living thing alive. Thank you for watching.